people who will have heard her name and seen that she did an interview will think, why is she talking about this now? She took the money. It was a one-night stand, essentially. Why bother? Well, this really isn't about the tawdy or salacious, uh, salacious details relating to uh, the sex with the president. What it's become uh, truly is a case of cover-up, uh, a case of the president's fixer, Michael Cohen, uh, engaging in conduct that is alleged to be illegal. Now we have the FBI that has raided uh, his home, his hotel room, as well as his office. Uh, we expect additional uh, raids by the FBI and inquiry uh, by the FBI. And this has become a very serious matter here in the United States as it relates to the cover-up of this hush payment. Uh, in, in answer to your question, my client uh, has always fought for the ability to tell the truth about what happened. But why would she want to speak out at all? I can see that it's of interest to Melania that he might have had a one-night stand, but does that make him a bad president? And why would she want to chuck in a private thing? It's not illegal. It might be immoral, but it's not illegal. Why would she want to have spoken up at all? What happened here was that my client was more than prepared to uh, to go on about her business and not speak about this. And in fact, it was Michael Cohen in February of this year uh, who broke the confidentiality and made statements in response to a Wall Street Journal article, uh, made defamatory statements about my client, uh, ultimately about her family. And he's created a real mess for himself now uh, and the President of the United States. But this isn't about muckraking. Um, there are some very serious potential criminal charges that may result from this, and it could potentially bring down the President of the United States. And is this about, allegedly, the misuse of campaign money? That's correct. I mean, that's one of the potential charges that could be brought, is there's this 130,000 U.S., 100-pound uh, payment that was made by Michael Cohen in the waning days of the 2016 uh, election. Uh, we allege that the president either knew of that payment or uh, arranged for its reimbursement. The president of the United States has never denied the relationship. He's never admitted it, but he's also never denied it directly. And we think the reason for that is because that he knows it's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. uh, my client gave a very prominent interview that was watched by 22 million people here in the United States. Uh, over 70 percent of America believed her. I, I don't know how much you know about President Trump, but he engages in Twitter wars and comments on all kinds of things at all, uh, at all periods of time. Uh, but his attention appears to be elsewhere on a very consistent basis. Mm -hmm. This is a serious matter. These are felonies here in the United States. Mm -hmm. You can serve prison time for them. Mm -hmm. This is not some minor matter. The FBI doesn't get involved in tracking down uh, minor crimes that don't matter. This is a very serious issue for the president. And and it could result in his downfall. Make no mistake about it. So where next for you? You've had the big interview, which has had a big reaction. What are you going to do next, and what do you expect the response to be? We are presently cooperating with uh, law enforcement officials here in the U.S. in connection with the investigation. We have uh, given them our full cooperation. Um, they are diligently investigating potential crimes by Mr. Cohen um, and others. We've also filed a motion in our case in order to take a deposition or sworn testimony outside of court of Michael Cohen uh, and the president. They're going to fight us on that. Uh, I think if we get those depositions uh, and we're able to place the president under oath about what happened here, that's going to be a very serious matter for him and could result in significant liability. Do you imagine um, that you'll ever see liability. the president in the dock about it? Can you see him? I mean, we've seen cases relating to alleged sexual relations um, force presidents to eventually have to speak out. Bill Clinton springs to mind. Can you imagine it going that far? I'm not going to predict it, but I can certainly imagine it going down the same, uh, the same road, if you will. Uh, and, of course, that ultimately led to the potential or almost impeachment of, of Bill Clinton when he testified falsely under oath relating to his relationship with Monica Lewinsky. Mm. And for you, Michael, I mean, for a lawyer, is this... Uh... The most, I mean, obviously the biggest case you will have ever fought, I imagine. I mean, for you personally, what does it mean? Well, I've had a lot of large cases here in the U.S., but certainly nothing of this magnitude. It's taken on a life of its own, and, uh, you know, it's an honor to represent Miss Clifford. She's, she's actually one of the smartest, most perceptive, uh, most self-aware and real clients I've ever had. 
Um, she, she truly is an amazing woman. I know a lot of people may scoff at that, but she, she's a very unique person. Um, she was intimidated and threatened for a long time and placed under the thumb of the president and his right-hand fixer. It's been an honor to be able to represent her in this case, yeah. and I think we're on the right side, and I think we're going to make sure that the truth is known to the American people and, and those outside of the, of the United States. Are you frightened at all? Because if the uh, allegations of intimidation are true, you could be find yourself in a tricky position, couldn't you? Yeah, but I've never been one to live in fear. I don't believe that's the way that, that we should live out our, our days on the planet. You know, my motto is there's no dress rehearsals in life. You only get one spin at the wheel, if you will. And, and right now, you know, this is uh, what I've chosen to do, and we're going to see this through to completion.